What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm gonna shoot a video going uh, once again into my wife's current blast, which I guess, kind of funny to say, but she has been effectively blasting for the last 12 weeks on 10 milligrams of Anivar per day, along with seven milligrams of test C per week, uh, which puts her testosterone level at 195 nanograms per deciliter, which is super physiological for a female. We've gone into the last, uh, I've done a couple of videos, one about her hormone replacement therapy and another one going into her Anivar cycle, what she felt, how it was going for her, but we just recently did a blood, a, a blood workup and got a whole bunch of results um, on her current blood work, so I thought it would be interesting to go into that to see what effects 12 weeks of Anivar plus the testosterone have had on her, her organs. At the end of that, go after we go over the blood work, then I'll get to you, I'll get you some basically some transformation pictures. So we don't, unfortunately, we don't have a true before and after for this blast. She's done multiple cycles of Anivar in the past, but I do have a pre- pre-workout picture that we'll get to at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna show you several images of where, of where she started and a bunch of where she's at now. So for starters, after 12 weeks um, on blast as a female, again, her, her testosterone level is 195 nanograms per deciliter, which is definitely super physiological for a female. Um, we'll get more to that when I get to that actual slide in this video. Um, but right now, we're going to start with uh, the CBC. So her, compre her comprehensive, uh, not com uh, her, what is that called? CBC. Um, fuck. It's her blood count. Um, white blood cells, red blood cells, basically everything here, if I remember correctly, uh, was good. So there's not a lot to go into. You can see on your screen uh, the first half of this or all of it. Everything is perfectly in the range on her uh, blood count. Uh, the second panel we have is going to be the comprehensive metabolic panel. And I think I put this one together in a couple of slides. So um, everything, well, her creatinine flags slightly high, which is nothing to be concerned about. Uh, weightlifting alone can cause that. Being a little dehydrated can cause that. She's, I don't think she's ever dehydrated. But um, there's a number of reasons for the creatinine to be slightly elevated. Uh, but kidney function is looking good. Bun to creatinine ratio is good. EGFR is good. Everything as far as kidney function here on her panel looks fine. All of her potassium, sodium, uh, chloride, all good. Carbon dioxide flagged one point high, no big deal there. Uh, what we really are interested in on the, C, uh, on the comprehensive metabolic panel is the AST ALT level. She's been running Anivar again at 10 milligrams a day for 12 consecutive weeks. Um, but she was running it prior to that. So she ran multiple, a couple cycles of five milligrams. I think she did like a bullshit six milligram for some reason cycle. And then I finally convinced her to go up to 10, which is when she started to see, I think, the most progress. So her AST is perfectly in the range at 25 and her ALT also perfectly in the range at 26. So clearly 10 milligrams of Anivar per day is not straining her liver. Of course, that's what we'd expect to see. Uh, there's loads and loads of studies out there on, on adults with this rain, with this, with this dosage. So um, obviously something that her, her liver can tolerate very well. The next set of results we have is the lipid panel. So again, she's running a, a DHT derivative being Anivar oxandrolone. She's got a super physiological level of testosterone. So we would expect to see probably something showing up on the lipid panel, and sure enough, we do. Her cholesterol, her total cholesterol is in the range at 138, not bad. Triglycerides are good, but her HDL is starting to creep down there. Her HDL is at 36 milligrams per deciliter in a range of 40 to 60. So uh, the, the layman's terms, Cliff's Notes version of this, your, your liver produces LDL, which takes fatty at, fats, lipids to, to the heart, and the HDL comes along and takes them back to the liver. When your a HDL, LDL ratio gets out of whack, you have too much cholesterol going to the heart and not enough being cleaned out and brought back to the liver, and that's what creates buildup, plaques in the arteries that can lead to heart attacks, strokes, any number of things, arterial sclerosis, 
It's generally not good. That's one of the reasons that I've been concerned about my cholesterol because it's gotten way the fuck up there. So her total cholesterol is in the range, but she's going to have to pay attention to that HDL because we would definitely like to see that higher. Obviously, on blast for 12 weeks, not the end of the world. Her health is going to be doing perfectly fine with these numbers. Just definitely something to, to take a look at. LDL, LDL cholesterol is in the range, however, at 92, but getting close. Um, again, in the cholesterol, um, HDL ratio is 3.8. So despite the fact that her HDL is a little low, which again, we would expect to see, everything else on the lipid panel is good. Um, and then finally, the only thing that you guys care about here is the E2 level, which is slightly interesting. Remember, she's uh, perimenopausal, so her body is starting to shut down its own natural production of hormones, and she is currently being administered, well, self-administering, the doctor wrote the script, three milligrams of um, uh, depoestradiol or uh, uh, estradiol cipionate per month that she takes in uh, four equal doses. She divides it up into four doses rather than the idiotic once a month for a fucking cipionate ester. But we covered that in the last video, so I won't beat that up again. So um, her, the problem with being perimenopausal is it's kind of hard to tell where in her cycle she is. So two phases of the cycle she's looking pretty good at 66. Well, I mean, one phase she's looking pretty good at 66. The other phase is she's very, she's on the absolute low end. She's six points from being too low. So I feel like, honestly, the, 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 the amount of estrogen she's been given is not enough. I think we're gonna step it up to five milligrams and see what happens. If she ends up doing that, we will get more blood work and report back on what her estrogen level um, ends up being and how she feels on that dose. So there you have the blood work. After 12 weeks of blasting super physiological levels of testosterone, cypionate or enanthate, and 10 milligrams of Anivar per day, effectively all of her, um, all of her biomarkers are perfectly in range. Her, her AST, ALT is perfect. The uh, lipids are slightly out of whack, and I think there was one other number, I don't remember, her creatinine. So nothing to be concerned about. Clearly, this is a very, very well-tolerated cycle for a female. My wife is 41 years old. The worst side effect that she has experienced during this entire cycle is she's very, very prone to acne. It has gotten progressively worse over the past 12 weeks. She's got quite a bit of bacne at this point. It, it, it covers the majority of her back, and she gets the cysts, the cystic acne on her face, which she's doing a lot to try to combat. So I think she's coming up pretty close to taking a break, and then we'll see how quickly, if at all, um, the acne recovers during that period. She's obviously gonna stay on the testosterone, so we'll see which one of those hormones is really to blame for the acne. Is it the Anivar, is it the test? Probably a combination of both. We'll see that uh, coming up here pretty quickly. So uh, let me reach over here and grab my laptop. I've got a series of pictures here put together um, I had to edit uh, most of these or a lot of these because they're actually on our OnlyFans. So if you want to see the unedited, uh, unedited pictures, there you go. There's a plug. Mike and Sarah, check it out. So here's the starter image. I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. I can't remember if I put it up or not. I've tried to shoot this a couple times now. This is Sarah um, in, on June 27th of 2019. This is post-baby, pre anavar pre-breast augmentation, clearly as you can see here. You can see that she is absolutely straight up and down. She's very, very skinny. Uh, obviously she has a great looking belly, but really no discernible muscle of any kind on this frame. And this is where she started on, again, June 27th at 112 pounds. About a year later, I took this image, and this is her at the water park with our kids. Uh, obviously, you can see that the breast augmentation is on and popping, but still no real discernible muscle mass anywhere on her frame. She looks great, just not someone who's spending a whole lot of time in the gym. Now, again, don't forget that we have a good amount of time in between. So that was June of 2020. We're getting ready to flash forward to... February of 2022. So about a year and a half, a few cycles under her belt, and this is what her back is looking like as of about a month ago. So you can see in this image some substantial growth in her back. 
She's got a lot of really great detail back there. The rhomboids, it just everything back here is looking good. You can see on the right side of the image where her rhomboid is going up into her trap. Very well developed. And then you can see somewhat in this image the shoulders um, and the tricep development there. Moving on to this next image, we have, oh, I got this out of whack. One second. Again, we have another back image. The reason I included this image is it also shows some detail on her shoulders and the biceps. So if you look at that right arm, you can see the triangle in her shoulders leading into her bicep, forearms, and then obviously her back has got a lot of really nice development. Pay close attention to her lower back, which is really knotted up going into that pretty dress. So her back and her arms are looking phenomenal in these pictures. Um, moving on to this next image, uh, this is, she actually is now a lingerie model. Uh, she's 41 years old. She got sponsored by a, a, a lingerie company. So we keep getting lingerie in the mail like every week. And she's putting, we're taking all these pictures and putting up on Instagram and some of the only fans. This is actually a piece that I bought her from Fashion Nova. I don't know why I'm re-gammering like you guys give a fuck. Uh, but you can see the ab development here. Um, her, her belly's looking great. You can see part of the legs, obviously, and then you can see her shoulder and tricep development is really apparent in this image here. Moving on to the next image, is a little, something I captured playing at the park. The reason I included this, I want you to pay attention to her lat development. It's a little bit sunblasted there on the left side of the image, but you can see nice round shoulders and bulging lats and that line cut right underneath her arm there, looking really sexy with that, with that shoulder sticking out. This obviously is a heavily edited image. Uh, this is from our OF account. Um, I'm adding this one because you can see the leanness in the abs. You can see that shoulder uh, on her, well, both shoulders are capped. And then the triceps, I mean, excuse me, the, the trap sticking up off of her shoulders. So she's looking nice and muscular here. Um, I have, obviously I had to, to uh, edit the, the breasts, but um, you can see off underneath the edit, her pec development coming out the side of both of her breasts. So uh, that's one of my favorite pictures. She's looking really good there. Again, another image showing some pec development around my edits and the leanness in her abs, the cuts along her obliques, and then again, some detail in the shoulders and the triceps. This is probably my favorite picture. I haven't shared this picture anywhere before. I decided to put it up here because it's gonna be edited anyway. Again, you can see really nice cuts in the abs around the obliques. The biceps are looking really full and sexy. And then you've got the great lats along the side and the, the uh, pet cuts going up into her uh, shoulders and her biceps. This image again is just to show the little four pack abs and an example of again, her, you can see some tricep cuts and you can definitely check out the, the detail and the uh, size of her shoulders. Uh, again, this image does a really good job of showing her lat development. There's a nice cut there um, showing how, how wide her lats are getting and how thick. And this I think is the last image, yeah. Uh, heavily edited again, just to, once again showing the ab development uh, and some quads. I, I should have added another leg, uh, another image showing her quads. Her lower body is definitely what she is trying to uh, pick up. If you notice from that first image, she's just straight up and down. She's not real curvy by nature, so she's not carrying a lot of weight in her glutes and her quads. And that's been a struggle for her trying to build those. Her upper body has built, has built really nicely. Her lower body looks phenomenal. She's put on a lot of size there, but she's literally going from a case of nasitol in a major way. And so she's trying to grow those glutes and quads and she's come a phenomenally long way in this process. Um, I would be remiss to not say, this is an example of what a girl can do with Anivar and some test who is training with a bodybuilder, but who struggles with her diet. Sarah's biggest problem and the reason she's not built more muscle in this time frame is she's like me and she does not want to eat. Uh, both of us are the kind of people that when we get into fights or we have stresses or turmoil, we just fucking stop eating. And so uh, it's been really difficult for her to maintain a diet that would keep her in a consistent uh, surplus so that she could build as much muscle as possible. Now, that being said, the difference between this 
before picture and this after picture of her back. On the picture on the left, she weighed 112 pounds in the morning. In the picture on the right, she's at 140 in the morning. So clearly, in looking at all of these images, she's every bit as lean, if not slightly leaner in the abdomen than her starter image, but she's got 30 pounds of muscle tacked onto her frame in a year and a half, guys. So that is the power of progressive overload, consistent training, and of course, a little help from anabolics. Um, so if you guys uh, have a girl, ladies, if you're watching this and you're trying to get a feel for what you can reasonably accomplish, this is a relatively good estimation. Now again, Sarah is a Sarah has got is an ectomorph through and through. I see really very little signs of any meso or endo in her. She eats a bare minimum to survive. And so this is what a person of her body type was able to put together. Uh, finally, to end this video, let me clarify. She has had very, very minor, minor, minor uh, clit enlargement during her multiple cycles. I'm talking about minor, but it's there. Um, still looks totally feminine, but it is, I know because I see it every single day. No one else would have noticed. Um, so minor development there. She thinks her voice changed slightly. I have questioned all of our friends and family because I wouldn't know, it, you know, the voice change is, is slow. No one agrees that her voice has changed at all. Um, the really, the biggest side effects that she has experienced from, from any of these compounds has been a, a, a constant struggle with acne and a fucking raging libido. Guys, gals, 10 milligrams of Anivar, <coughs> sorry, I got my allergies, 10 milligrams of Anivar and super physiological levels of testosterone will definitely improve your girl's uh, libido. Hers is out of freaking control. She gives me a run for my money every day of the week. So there you have it. As always, this is not medical advice. Do not take these drugs without the advice of your doctor. Everything that she takes is prescribed to her. Believe it or not, there are plenty of ways for you to get test and Anivar with a doctor's help. You don't have to buy it underground. Everything she uses is prescribed by a doctor, so do not break the law. Do not take this as medical advice. Don't listen to anything I'm saying other than to be entertained and informed. Uh, so there you have it. Hopefully uh, this has been entertaining. Hopefully it's been informative. As I always say, questions, concerns, problems, bitches, complaints in the com uh, comment section below. I will put her Instagram, my Instagram. You know the OnlyFans already if you want to check that out. And as always, where's my remote? We'll see you on the next one.